young plant that makes spores, or it's a young sporophytic plant. Uh, that's all an embryo is, it's, it's a baby plant. Uh, and so now we're gonna talk about plants that at least have a young sporophyte that's embedded uh, inside of their tissues and we call that an embryo. So what are some characteristics of the embryophytes? You can see that as kind of small font. They're mostly autotrophic, these uh, land plants. Uh, there are some parasitic ones, but they're mostly autotrophic. It's photosynthetic. They're mo mostly, uh, well, they're all multicellular with advanced tissue differentiation. So if you say differentiation, you're saying specialization. So this means that their, their tissues have a specific function. They have a, a specialization, they do something. Uh, from this point on, we've, we've got some real tissues that we're looking at. Uh, here's this whole thing again, and you're gonna get a life cycle today or tomorrow uh, in lab be able to get to it here in lecture. Uh, but uh, what we have is we've got a heteromorphic alternation of generations and it's sporic. So from here on out, they are all heteromorphic sporic alternation of generations. Uh, so that means they're all spore, sporic uh, meioses or sporic life cycles. That's what we're doing here. Every one of the embryophytes uh, has chlorophylls A and B and carotenoids, just like the green algae uh, that gave rise to them. Uh, they all store their starch inside the chloroplast, just like the green algae, which, as you learn, is the uh, next group of plants here. They're primarily terrestrial, but we have we do have some embryophytes that have made it into the ocean. And we do have a bunch of embryophytes that have made it or stayed uh, in the aquatic systems. Uh, so we do have some freshwater embryophytes, but very few actually marine ocean uh, embryophytes. So they're mostly terrestrial, which means they're up on land. Uh, these things have sporopollenin. And sporopollenin occurs uh, around the green algae, uh, but that term wasn't brought up. Uh, but sporopollenin is present in green algae, but also in all the embryophytes. Uh, this is a, it's a cyclic alcohol. And what it does is it prevents spores from desiccating. prevents spores from desiccation, which is drying out. And so uh, sporopollenin covers, it's like a sealant. Uh, if you've ever uh, put a sealant on like a deck, uh, a picnic table, a fence, it's like a sealant you put on the outside to seal it up and it keeps it from drying out. So sporopollenin is on the spores and it is on the pollen too. And it helps to prevent those, to keep those uh, spores and pollen from drying out. Because once you come up on land, we're coming up on land with this group, uh, land is a difficult place. Uh, it's very different from an aquatic system. You don't have to worry about drying out in a pond, a lake, uh, or a river. Uh, but once you get up on land, you gotta worry about uh, your reproductive cells drying out. So they involve spore pollen. Male and female gametangia. So, the gametangium uh, gametangium is a structure that makes gametes. see here, um, usually they don't call them oogonia anymore, uh, but there's, typically when we get to the embryophytes now, there's two types of gametangia. Uh, there's the antheridia that you've already learned about. The antheridia makes sperm. 
into the male structures, the male gametes. And we talked about the oogonia and algae, those make eggs. Uh, they have a different term for them in these groups of plants. They call them archegonia. Those make eggs. So that's the female gametangium. So the, these are both gametangium, uh, but uh, we give them different names because this one makes sperm, this one makes eggs. Anther means male, arche means egg. So egg making structure. You're going to see that in lab. Uh, photosynthetic tissues produced by an apical meristem. So the apical means grows at the tip of the plant. Uh, so we'll talk more about meristems later. But the cells are made at the tip. Sporangia with a sterile jacket. Sterile jacket means that there are vegetative cells protecting the reproductive cells. So this is uh, sporangia with sterile jacket. Uh, usually what that means uh, is that you've got some, some cells on the outside like this, and then the spores are in here. This would be the sterile portion. So the sterile jacket keeps those spores on the inside from drying out, uh, and it's just a layer of one or two or three or more cells there thick, uh, a thick structure around that. Uh, and that's really its main goal is to protect and keep those spores on the inside from drying out. These are spores. Remember Kara uh, from the last uh, portion? Kara had oogonia and antheridia, and if you looked at those, uh, the antheridia were, were round, and the oogonia were kind of crown-like and elongate. They actually had sterile cells around them, uh, and there was a sterile jacket around them. Uh, but here they purposefully call it a sterile jacket. Back there, they just referred to those as vegetative cells, which are cells protecting those gametes. These are sporangia here. Uh, Plasmid is not a present. So we have these uh, cytoplasmic connections. These are connections between cells. And when you have connections between cells, you can exchange not only carbohydrates and water and dissolved uh, atoms or elements, but you can exchange uh, uh, hormones, nutrients, anything uh, through these little cellular connections. So uh, all the embryophytes have those. That's still kind of an old number. Uh, this is probably more like 450 uh, for the uh, what we call the embryophytes, the land plants. Uh, probably more around 450,000 uh, is the actual number there of these. So uh, this next slide, I've given you what is not a scientific name. This is just a, a term that refers to all liverworts hornworts and mosses. So if you say you want to study bryophytes uh, for a living, you're, you're going to be a bryologist. Uh, I hear that every day, right? Uh, so if you want to be a bryologist, that means you're going to study mosses. But really what it means is that if you, if you say you're a bryophyte expert or you're a bryologist, you're going to not only study liverworts, hornworts, but also mosses. So it's really all three when you use that common name, bryophytes, liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. Uh, that's not a, a scientific name. It's referring to all three of these plants. So bryo means moss. It includes liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. Uh, you're going to see it in the life cycle. Uh, the dominant phase is the gametophyte. This is the gametophyte here this green photosynthetic thing that looks like a moss, if you've ever seen moss before. Uh, the green thing that looks photosynthetic, that is the dominant phase, and what that means is that that's the phase that lives for a long time. It dominates the life cycle, it lives for a long time. The sporophyte is, do you see these little stock things? So the sporophyte is the thing that is the result of sexual reproduction. The sporophyte is here, 
The spore effect grows out of the female, and there's a little stalk called a seta, and then there's a capsule on the top here with spores in it. That's the spore effect, that whole little brown thing that shoots up here and makes spores. That is very short-lived, uh, so it's not considered the dominant generation. The dominant generation, again, is this thing, the metophyte generation. The metophyte, that's the sporophyte uh, that makes spores. Sporophyte is matrotrophic and short-lived. So matro means mother, and trophic means nourishment. So if you say you're matrotrophic, uh, you're saying that uh, you need nourishment from the mother, and so we are that way as humans, and so is the moss. Uh, this sporophyte here gets all its nutrition and its hormones from the female plant, which is the green thing down here that keeps on living. Uh, so we call that matrotrophic, mother nourishing is what that term means. And then those things die. So what's the purpose of a sporophyte? The purpose of a sporophyte is the plant that makes spores. It's, that's its purpose. It grows up, it releases spores, and then it dies. So six to 16 weeks, it's done with. This thing keeps on living, the gametophytes that are down here, uh, generation. Water is required for fertilization. So these have uh, flagellated cells. The flagellated cells look just like uh, the sperm in Kara. And so what that means is that sperm don't swim very good in air. Uh, sperm need a medium uh, by a way to swim, and that's water. So if you don't have water, uh, you can't have reproduction, you can't have fertilization. So we need water for uh, reproduction, which is fertilization, so they can swim to the egg uh, and fertilize that. Sexual reproduction involves antheridia and archegonia, uh, like I just mentioned here. Uh, sperm making and egg making structures. The sperm are biflagellated, uh, they look just like kind of S shaped, asymmetrical, just like Kara. Uh, asexual reproduction is by fragmentation and jemmy, which I'll show you the jemmy uh, in, a, in a second here. These are little cups, and inside these little cups or bowls, there are these multicellular bodies which can splash out with water, and those little bodies grow into new plants. Fragmentation is just that if the thing rips apart, that ripped off portion from the plant uh, can grow into a new plant. So, Little warts, horn warts, and mosses have no problem just being ripped off and then growing somewhere else. Plasma does not are present. Rhizoids occur in most bryophytes. Rhizoids are for attachment. They're not really for much nutrient absorption. Photonemata in most. Photonemata are thread-like. You'll see them. The word means, chrono means first. On, uh, on the slides, uh, protonema, uh, really first thread. Protonema is singular, and protonema is plural. And what they are is they are young. Filamentous gametophytes. So I just showed you up here, I just told you about mosses, and I said this is what they look like. And uh, everybody can recognize probably moss. It looks like a little green thing on, on the ground there. Uh, but before it gets to this, it starts out as something that is thread like, filament like. And it looks like green algae. And in fact, if I put that on the first test, you probably would have called it Spirogyra or Eulothrix, uh, something like that, probably without even thinking about it. Uh, but that's what they look like. The moss start out as Protonemata uh, when they're young, and then eventually they will form buds, and those buds will grow into what we think of as a moss. But they start off looking like green algae. Stomata or stomata-like structures present. So stomata uh, are those structures that allow for gas exchange. So uh, carbon dioxide can come in and oxygen can go out of the plant. Uh, so stomata are for gas 
gas exchange in carbon dioxide and oxygen. In terms of bryophyte species, uh, 16,000 is the estimate. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is, um, but uh, that's the number of the book gives you. Turned on by bryophytes for some crazy reason. <laughs> the World Authority is at Ber Berkeley. Uh, Brent Mishler, he's the head of the department at UC Berkeley, which is the department that's there. Uh, and so he runs that. And so that's really the place to go if you want to uh, make your name in bryology. Uh, he would be the person to study under. And uh, so it's nearby. It's a good place to, to study these 16,000 species that are out there. They haven't all been analyzed, uh, by the way. Um, these are just some pictures of the stuff we just talked about. Here's these uh, jemmy, these little cups or bowls, and inside of there, these, these little multicellular body bodies. Those are these are called jemmy cups, and the jemmy are on the inside. So when water splashes those little jemmy out, uh, they look like little croissants. Uh, when they splash out that little croissant, it's a multicellular little collection of cells, it'll germinate and grow into a new liverwort, like you see here. Uh, these are reproductive structures, these little palm tree looking things. Uh, they're female structures, you see there. This is a bud I was just telling you about, and this is a protonimata I was just telling you about. So the mosses start off with all these green al alba looking filaments as gametophytes, but then they produce a bud and that bud is what looks like a moss or grows into a moss that you see there. These are protonemata, connecting this cell to this cell. So there's two of them uh, that you see uh, connecting those two cells. Here's a stomata, and here's an archegonium uh, that we have uh, on liverwort. Uh, so the archegonium contains an egg, which is this thing in the middle there that you see. Uh, it's protective, so there's a sterile jacket uh, there's a bunch of sterile or vegetative cells surrounding that egg uh, to protect it. Same thing around the sperm. There's a bunch of vegetative sterile cells that surround uh, the, the male anthridium to protect those sperm. Okay, so here's the first phylum. The first phylum is Marchantiophyta, so there's three uh, that you're going to look at. The Bryophyta, Marchantiophyta, and Anthocerebrophyta. Uh, the hornworts. So the liverworts, uh, the group is named after a French botanist named Marchand. Uh, in the olden days, we used to call these hepatophyta. Uh, that meant liver plants. Uh, but somebody <coughs> pointed out that Marchantiophyta is a name that precedes hepatophyta, so now we call them after this French botanist. Any liverwort is classified as a phylum, Marchantiophyta, after that botanist. The sporophytes without stomata, but they have pores. Uh, so the sporophyte has pores. Um, and uh, actually, the gametophyte has pores. Here they are. Uh, that you see right here. It's really just an opening, it's a hole in the thallus. So the term, this is the thallus here. So that's the thallus, that's the thallus. It's a leafy uh, type of liverwort here. But if we talk about the body uh, of these plants, we're just talking about its thallus. So here's the thallus of a typical <coughs> liverwort, the one you're going to be looking at. And it's got these little holes in it, which allow gases to come in and out. And these are the photosynthetic cells on the top uh, that you have up there. Uh, so it's not a real stomata, it's just a, a hole or pore. There's no specialized conducting tissue. The nutrients uh, just come in and out of the plant. Uh, and they don't conduct carbohydrates anywhere in the plant. Uh, they just make them and it just diffuses. Gametophytes are thalloid or leafy. So these are gametophytes here and here. This is what they call thalloids. It looks like a big blade. That's what thallus is usually referring to. This is leafy. This is something called Vizania. And it's got these little leaf-like structures. So it looks very different than the thalloid, uh, sheet-like, leaf-like structure there. The rhizoids are single-celled. So when you look at this thing in the lab, you're going to look at a cross-section. Uh, of a typical liverwort, and you're going to see these uh, red stained, kind of sharp 
single celled structures. Those are the rhizoids. And they're kind of curved and they point into the soil to hold the plant into the soil. Uh, so when you see a single red looking cell that's pointy, that's a rhizoid. They also have scales on the lower surface. Uh, and some of these scales help with absorption, but also for anchorage. And they have a lot of cells in them. Those are multicellular. Uh, so you'll see both. Simplest of all land plants is maybe the best way to put that, not living plants. It's really the simplest would be the, uh, you can say the, the green algae or, or even the red algae. Those are, those are kingdom plants there too. Uh, sporangium with dehiscent capsule, elaters present in some to disperse spores. Uh, so there is a sporangium in this case, and uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see what that looks like uh, in a bit here. Uh, but this structure makes spores, and in some cases, they disperse the spores depending on the organism you're talking about. Those cells contain numerous chloroplasts. It's hard to tell from this picture here, uh, but uh, you'll see them on the slide, is that these cells do have lots and lots of chloroplasts for photosynthesis in those upper cells. Moist, some aquatic, temperate, and tropical habitats. Uh, 6,000 species. Uh, the examples are Martantia and Rixia. Uh, that's Martantia here and Rixia there, and Rixia carpus. Uh, but these are the two typical examples. We're just going to focus on uh, Martantia in the lab. Uh, so we have all the stages of the life cycle there for that in the lab for you to see with Martantia. So here's what Martentia looks like. Um, the male reproductive structure looks different from the female reproductive structure. So even though we're not doing the life cycle of this, we're gonna do a typical moss. This, this is a liverwort. Uh, even though we're not doing the, the life cycle of this, you will look at slides of these things. So when you look at this reproductive structure, here it is here, here and here, it's got a stalk. Uh, this is the gametophyte, all of this is gametophyte. This is also gametophytic tissue. But when you look at that, it looks different than these ones. These are the females here. These are their reproductive structures. See how these stock looks the same, but this structure here, this is called an archegonial head. And on the lower surface of that archegonial head, there's a bunch of archegonia. And inside the archegonia, there's a bunch of eggs. So this is the female egg-making structure, and it looks like a sea star, starfish kind of thing, see? This one back here with the umbrella is the male head. And so if you follow that down, we know this is a male plant because it made this thing, uh, which looks a little bit more like an umbrella. Uh, that's called an antheridial head. And on the upper surface of that antheridial head, there are sperm-making structures called antheridia. So that's how we tell these sexes apart, is you have to have a reproductive structure on it. Uh, there's, there's a stalk, an antheridial head with antheridia, where there's a stalk, uh, and uh, there's archegonia, an archegonial head. So these are female plants, or gametophytes, making that. So true or false, uh, shown below are male gametophytes. <coughs> so that's false. Uh, these are all, these have little jimmy cups for asexual reproduction, but the things that you're supposed to look at here are all these archegonial heads. They look like little starfish. And if you see those, that means you got a bunch of females here. These are all female gametophytes. And this is what we call a phalloid uh, type of arrangement, or it's not even a leaf. We just call it a phalloid phallus or body, what you see there. So this is a bunch of uh, female phalloid uh, gametophytes because of those uh, little sea star looking things. I'm going to leave the lights off just to point out a few things here because you're going to look at them uh, in the lab. Um, Here's what we were just talking about. There's female gametophytes and there's male gametophytes. They're separate from each other. And 
as I just said, their heads, they didn't do a good job drawing it there, but their heads look different. Uh, sea star-like or umbrella-like. The male gametophyte will, with sperm, fertilize the eggs on the female, and then what happens is it makes a very small matrotrophic sporophyte. This is the sporophyte. It's about one millimeter in size, and it occurs on the lower surface of the female, right here, of this little sea star. So on the lower surface there, after it gets fertilized with the sperm, that will grow into an embryo and eventually into the sporophyte. So the sporophyte in this particular group, the sporophyte is very short-lived, about six weeks. It's gonna grow right off of mom. And what is the sporophyte gonna do? It's gonna make spores. It's only this big, one millimeter, it's round, with a little tiny little baby bee. Uh, and it sits right there on the lower surface uh, of these things here. And you can almost make out uh, some little round structures underneath there, there and there, that are on the lower surface of this. So that's the sporophyte, and the sporophyte uh, is very short-lived uh, in all these groups, except for the hornworts. Uh, but it's on the lower surface of these little archegonial heads. Uh, so we're going to look uh, at that in the uh, lab.